This video is brought to you by me. For $1 a month, you can support the channel directly and help me keep doing what I love. Thanks for watching and supporting. Around this time of year, late spring, early summer, I get this craving for some horror games. Back when I tackled the first four Resident Evil games, it was around this time two years ago. But this year I wanted to play something different because I missed out on a lot of horror growing up that I want to catch up on. Silent Hill was a game I landed on because I've always really dug the concept. The idea that this town is shrouded in mystery that can disorient you and scare you with supernatural happenings is compelling, and is unique when you compare it to other horror games where you are pursued by a single villain or so. And while I know the first game isn't necessarily the universal fan favorite, I wanted to see how Konami realized their vision of this town and made it work on PS1. I love going back to the first attempt at now beloved series, and Silent Hill 1 seemed like the perfect place to dive in. So let's get into it and see how the original game stands up. Harry Mason and his daughter Cheryl are on their way to vacation in Silent Hill, a town that we know is terrifying, but is seen in-universe as a place you go to take advantage of a resort and amusement park. Harry, a widowed father, is looking for some levity from the grief of losing his wife a few years before. On his way into town, a girl appears in the middle of the road and Harry swerves out of the way to avoid hitting her. The car crashes and he falls unconscious at the wheel. After he awakens, Cheryl is gone and the rest of the story follows Harry's pursuit of Cheryl around town. By the end of the game, we will unfold a plot that has Cheryl as the centerpiece of a cultist ritual. Yeah. From the get-go, everything feels really off. A dense fog covers the area, and roads simply end, greeting Harry with a bottomless abyss, making navigating Silent Hill difficult as he searches for his daughter. These two aspects of Silent Hill became a staple of the series and contributed to the consistent atmosphere that the developers really succeed at creating. If the atmosphere alone isn't enough to get you spooked, demonic occurrences are happening around the city, and insignias all over town are the leftovers of occult activities. Creatures that appear straight out of hell pursue Harry Harry as he navigates the town. The game relies heavily on using a map to figure out what your objectives are and what to do next. As you explore new places, Harry draws on the map and allows you to refer back to places you have been as well as places you have yet to go. It's subtle but it makes a big difference as you try to make your way around the maze of decrepit streets and buildings. It makes it very easy to figure out what to do next, whether it be move on to the next main plot location or explore a bit for healing items and ammo. At certain points, the sky turns black, and the pavement below is replaced with steel grating, barbed wire, and blood. These episodes transport Harry to a parallel version of Silent Hill, filled with more demons and enemies to overcome, not to mention dark hints of what happened in Silent Hill that led to its collapse. As you chase Cheryl through the alleys and abandoned streets, you really get a sense of scale for how huge Silent Hill is, especially for a PS1 game. The fog that encompasses the town does an incredible job of both providing ominous ambience, while also hiding the fact that the PS1 could only render a little bit of the town at once. It's a brilliant way the developers did more with less, learning the system's limitations and turning them into a strength. In fact, the strongest thing about Silent Hill 1 is its atmosphere. Silent Hill takes normal locations of life and flips them into eerie set pieces, almost an uncanny valley sort of thing. Harry explores places that aren't frightening in themselves like a cafe and an elementary school, as well as a hospital which I'm sure people are already afraid of. But in Silent Hill, these places are removed from their usual context. The cafe, a communal gathering spot usually bustling with conversation, falls silent. A school usually filled with people is now empty, and it evokes the same feeling of being at school after hours for some function and walking around the halls totally alone and in the dark. And the hospital becomes even creepier and scarier than normal. The hallways are empty, no one is around, unkempt hospital beds lay in disarray, as the patients seemingly have all evacuated for an unknown reason. It sent me back to the days of visiting my grandma in the ICU and having to wait in the dead silent waiting room, or wandering the halls looking for a vending machine to pass the time, or even just a restroom. The way the PS1 graphics warp and wobble only add to the creepiness as you have to rely on your imagination to fill in the blanks of what you're looking at. The graphics are too simple to tell the whole story, and your brain fills in what is left out. 
These feelings of dread aren't helped by the fact that Harry isn't a fighter, rather he is a writer by trade. Compared to the trained stars agents of Resident Evil who take aim and hit their targets every time, Harry feels like he has never wielded a firearm before. It feels bad by design. It doesn't help that enemies come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Winged creatures swoop down overhead, and no matter how fast you run, they will always catch up to you. Hellhounds line the alleys of Silent Hill and are ready to lunge at you at any given moment. In spite of that, I found them the least threatening enemy type because they are easily avoided and dodged. Plus, you can shoot them out of the air mid-jump. To me, the most frightening enemies were the creatures you find in the underworld version of Silent Hill. When the sky darkens and the really scary creatures come out to play, the suspense thickens. When you are exploring the school, demonic children emerge with knives ready to grip onto Harry and drain the life out of him. They're not too tough to dispatch, but rush through a bit too quickly and you'll be surrounded. A few of the enemies fell flat for me, like the Great Dane-sized praying mantis creatures. It kind of felt like the developers were still getting their footing on what would be scary going into future games. But my sister's boyfriend watched me play this section, and he was thoroughly spooked, so what do I know? Your results may vary. You can lock onto enemies, but you're not guaranteed a hit. If you are too far away, Harry will miss. This puts an interesting emphasis on melee weapons because you are guaranteed a hit as long as you are within range. My weapon of choice was the large hammer that lets you bludgeon your way through enemies, but that also means getting up close and personal with them, risking damage in order to get a hit in. It's intense and through my first playthrough I never felt overpowered. I even resorted to running away from enemies instead much of the time. Creatures come at you from all directions, and relying on Harry's borderline inept aim makes things all the more stressful. Silent Hill does so much right, but about 20% of the game falls flat for me. The cutscenes are pre-rendered videos, and these were a pretty big deal at the time. But now, in my opinion, the graphics and the cutscenes and the gameplay are so starkly different that they break the immersion whenever one starts. The contrast is so great that you have to take a second and reorient in your head which character is supposed to be on screen. It also doesn't help that the writing and voiceovers are similarly products of their time and aren't given a ton of attention. The voice work feels like when sports video games have announcers with lists of lines to read in a recording studio and they have to feign excitement or disappointment about something that isn't actually happening in front of them. Your wife, she's here with you. She died four years ago. Now it's just me and my daughter. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I'd better be going. It feels wrong like the lines were cut and pasted to fit a story instead of flowing into one another. It doesn't help that some of the actual dialogue is just plain laughable. She said something about the town being devoured by darkness. Gibberish like that. Any idea what it means? Darkness devouring the town. Must be on drugs. Anyway, I gotta go back outside and hope the pterodactyl and the dog with its flesh melted off are gone. See ya, Harry. Boss fights in the game are also the weakest part of the gameplay. They never feel like an actual threat as long as you have enough ammo. The game actually features many different endings, and to get to the true ending, you have to do an extra side quest. I'm not gonna spoil any of them here because what would be the point? Overall, Silent Hill was a great time through and through. I had an awesome time from start to finish, even with some of its trip-ups. If you're on a horror kick like I am, Silent Hill 1 will scratch that itch incredibly well. What's your favorite Silent Hill game? Let me know in the comments. If you like the video, hit like because it helps the video out a lot. Lastly, if you want more videos like this, hit subscribe and the bell to be notified when I upload. I'm also on Patreon if you want to support the channel directly. I want to thank my higher tier patrons, Kaylee, Andrews, Elmore, and Donahoe, Benjamin, BBF and Bloxburg, Just Jessica, and Kudo716. See you in the next one.